Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we'll take a few questions from the media, and then we'll have to hit the road. But um, I can't, unfortunately, the lights are a little bright, so I can't see you. But if you got a microphone, just shout out a question. Hey, Senator. Uh, you came here to talk about the auto industry in Michigan. What do you see as Michigan's role in the future of the industry, whether that is predominantly gas or electric? Well, look, I think Michigan's role in the industry is going to be the leader of the American auto industry because it always has been, but only if we get leadership that's going to fight for Michigan auto workers instead of a person who fights to ship their jobs to China. And I think that's, that's the most important thing. Look, we're going to have EVs. And that, this is the thing. Donald Trump and I are not anti-electric vehicle. We're anti-telling Americans what car they have to drive. That's, that's what we are. But here, here's what's so crazy about Kamala Harris's EV policies is, on the one hand, she's taxing Americans to send a lot of their money to foreign-made electric vehicles, while on the other hand, she refuses to allow America to dominate not just the manufacture of the electric vehicles, but everything that comes before it. The mining of the minerals, the manufacture of the batteries. They have made making things in the United States practically illegal, and so when they subsidize electric vehicles, they are necessarily subsidizing electric vehicles that are m m primarily made in China. So here's what Donald Trump and I believe. One, number one, let's unshackle the industry and stop these crazy regulations that make it impossible to build things and make things in the United States of America. And number two, let's invest in Michigan and American auto workers and the products they're building. And you do that. And I really believe you're, you're going to unleash a renaissance in manufacturing in this country, and it's going to start right here in the great state of Michigan, because you all know how to make things with your hands. We're proud of that, but we want to keep it going and build upon it. So I think Michigan's role is going to be leading this industry, but only if we stop the stupid policies of Kamala Harris and get Donald Trump back in the White House. Ne next question. Senator Vance, uh, <laughs> Senator Vance, this is Peter Cobes from the Traverse City Record Eagle, our hometown newspaper. Yay and boo. That's all right. That's okay. We're That's used okay. to it. We're, uh, we're, we're having fun. You're allowed so, to ask your question. They're allowed to tell you how they yeah. think about it, right? So That's okay. We, this is America. We have, a, question, we have a, a very serious shortage of affordable housing in this yes, area. Yes, we do. Not just Grand Traverse County, but all over northern Michigan. Uh, families with their kids can't stay here because yep. they can't afford to buy a house. We can't get service workers up here because the rental is too expensive. Uh, it Homes that 10 years ago cost $100,000 are selling for $800,000. What can those people do now to address this problem and how will you help them? Yeah. Well, let me, let me, look, there, let, let, me, let me just say, one, I, I, I appreciate and I agree with the basic premise of the question, which is housing is way too expensive in this area and all over the country. And this is something that has really changed from even when I was a little kid. And, and look, look, I, I did not grow up in a family with a lot of money. I think a lot of you know that. A lot of you have heard my story. But look, uh, a lot of American middle class and working class people could afford to buy a home. I, I had a member of my family who actually said something to me very recently, and it was, it was really sad. It kind of hit me how, how, how just unbelievably sad it is for American young people. You know, she was talking about buying a home herself, and she said, isn't it kind of crazy that when our parents were young, they could just go and, and work a job and raise a family and afford to buy a home? And I thought to myself, what a terrible job we're doing for our young people, that they feel like they cannot access the American dream of homeownership. But look, the, 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 the answer is most immediately, it goes back to the border. And why does it go back to the border? Because every economist and every person with an ounce of common sense will tell you that if you bring in millions upon millions of people who are competing with Americans for scarce homes, it's going to shoot the price of housing through the roof. So the first thing that you've got to do to make it more affordable to buy a home in this country is to get people who shouldn't be here out of the country in the first place. And that will create a lot of space. Now look, that, that, to be clear, that is not the whole solution to the problem because you've also got to build a lot of houses. 
And we unfortunately have made it so hard on construction workers and construction businesses to build housing in the United States of America. When we talk about regulations, I think a lot of people say, well, what, what do you really mean about regulations? Well, here, the two things that I'm really focused on when I, when I criticize the regulatory regime of Kamala Harris, it's number one, they're shutting down pipelines, they're shutting down oil fields, they're shutting down natural gas rigs, they're shutting down the American energy sector. That's a disaster. You've got to stop the regulations there. And by the way, that will also lower the cost of housing because one of the reasons housing is so expensive is because the energy to build the homes has gotten so expensive thanks to Kamala Harris. But the second thing you've got to do is stop making it so hard to build things. Look, think about this country. Think about the history of the United States of America. You think about, you know, what is it that really sets us apart? We are frontiersmen. We tamed the wilderness over hundreds of years and built incredible skyscrapers and great, beautiful buildings. We are a country of builders and of makers, and Kamala Harris is trying to throw you in jail if you build without her permission. It's a joke. And we've just got to get back to making it easier for people to build things in this country that will drive down the cost of housing and make American homeownership affordable again for Michigan. Mm -hmm. Next question. Yes. Hello and welcome to Traverse City. We're glad to Thank have you. you here. It's good to be here. I'm Jennifer Isbell with Michigan News Source, and my question is, what are you doing to prepare for the upcoming difficult debate against your opponent? Thank you. Well, look, I, I, I think the way I see the debate is, is very simple. It's an opportunity where for 90 minutes, Governor Walz and I are going to debate the issues that matter to the American people. And what I'm going to try to show is, is very simple, that the, the, the candidacy, the team of substance, the team that actually has a record that, that we're proud of instead of we're running away from, and the team that actually has a plan is the team of Trump Vance. And that's, that's, that's what I'm going to try to do. Is Look, I, 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 I think one of the fundamental differences between Kamala Harris's campaign and Donald Trump's campaign is we speak to our fellow Americans like they're citizens, because they are, Kamala Harris speaks to her fellow Americans like they're children. And so what I'm, I'm just going to try to talk about here is explicitly what we're going to do to make your life better, and here are the ways in which the current administration has made your life worse, and we're going to try to connect it to public policy, because that's what I think the American people care about. So that's my plan. So we're studying up as much as we can on the issues that matter to the American people, and I'm looking forward to it, because again, as much as the moderators may very well be biased, we'll see about that. I know they were the first time. But it's, it's, it's an opportunity for me to get to tell the American people how I think we can make their lives better and how Donald Trump's policies can make them more prosperous, can make the world more peaceful, and can secure that southern border. If we do those things, we're going to win, and I believe we will. Next question. We'll just do a couple more here. Oh, okay. Ha. Welcome back to Michigan, Senator. Thank uh, you. I have a question about foreign policy. You recently detailed a plan that would end the Ukrainian war in a podcast that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called too radical. I want to give you the floor to respond to that. How do you respond to what Zelensky said? And can you detail how a Trump Vance administration would end the war in Ukraine? Well, look, the details for how Donald Trump is going to end the war in Ukraine is by not being weak and not being dumb, which is unfortunately something you can't say for the current administration. It's very simple. Russia didn't invade a single one of their neighbors for the four years that Donald Trump was president. And on the, the president before him and the president after him, somehow Russia keeps on invading their neighbors. It's because they don't respect American leadership and because our leaders aren't smart. So what Donald Trump brings back is not just strength but intelligence to the Oval Office. And I think that's really all you need to end this war. Because, look, it is not in America's interest. It's not in Ukraine's interest. It's not in Europe's interest for this war to go on indefinitely. Now, you said that 
that you know, Zelensky criticized something I said. First of all, that's not a plan. That's me talking about one possible scenario for how this thing might ultimately end. But look, I, I, don't, I don't appreciate Zelensky coming to this country and telling the American taxpayers what they ought to do. He ought to say thank you to the American taxpayers. But look, all, all you, th this is very important. I, I think the American people are looking, and, and remember when, when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris ran, what they promised was a return to normalcy. <laughs> and think about this. Think about, we've got a, a conflict right now, a war that would have never happened in the Middle East that threatens to become a regional war. We've got a war in Europe that wasn't happening under Donald Trump's leadership. We've got the threat of war about to break out in East Asia between China and Taiwan, the entire world is a tinderbox, and Kamala Harris, I really believe, is the match. Because weakness invites conflict. Donald Trump believes in peace through strength and peace through smart diplomacy, and that's what he's going to bring back to the White House. Let's, let's do one more question because I'm having some fun, and then I'll leave you with some final words, and then we'll have to get out of here. Thank you for doing this, Senator. He's back there. <laughs> Go Thank ahead. you for doing this, Senator. Um, my question for you is, Trump says it's too late to debate because voting has already started and it's bad for America. You're set to debate walls on Tuesday. Does that mean your debate is bad for America? Well, look. Uh, The, look, for, first of all, the, the, the president already did a debate, and I thought he did a hell of a job. How did you guys think he did? It's so funny. All these, all these pundits after the debate, you know, you turn on the TV, which, again, I don't recommend watching CNN, but if you, if you do, they turn on the TV and they say, well, you know, clearly she got some good shots in, blah, 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 blah. And then you, you listen to the undecided voters who watch the debate, and it's like the majority of them are voting for Donald Trump afterwards. Well, if the majority of undecided voters are voting for one guy, I'd say that guy won the debate. And here's the thing. Here, this is why Kamala Harris is desperate to do this again, because she knows that she's losing. And when you're running a losing campaign, you throw everything against the wall, and that's exactly what Kamala Harris is doing. Now, we have to remember that months ago, Donald Trump offered multiple debates, and the Democrats said no. The Democrats said, no, we don't want to do all these debates. And now that they're losing, they want to change the deal. Well, too bad. You should have made that decision three months ago, not now that you're running a losing campaign. But look, I, I, think, I think the more important point here, the, the more important point for the American people is Donald Trump is getting out there every single day. I'm getting out there every single day, and we're doing what a president and vice president ought to do. We're trying to earn the trust and the vote of the American people. I, I think... I, I think the American media ought to be much more interested in why Kamala Harris is running from every single interview when Donald Trump is getting out there and he's talking to the American people every single opportunity that he gets. And I think the president has figured out that the best way to get out there and reach the American people is to do it directly, to do what we're doing here, to talk to you guys directly, because putting this filter and putting a teleprompter between you and the American people, that's how Kamala Harris is going to run her campaign. Donald Trump is going to run his campaign on ideas. He's going to run his campaign on making this country great again because he already did it once, and he's going to do it again if the American people give him that opportunity. So I, 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 want, to, I want to leave you with just a couple of thoughts here because, look, it's, it's so much fun to be here, and I've, I've loved spending some time with you, but we've also got some work to do. And the president does this at every rally, and I think it's such an important message, and I'm, I'm going to try to impart it to you all. We've got to get out there and work. And I've got a very specific request for you. It's that I want you to get out there, and I want you to vote ten times. <laughs> now, the, the, headline, the headline on CNN tomorrow will be, uh, Senator Vance encourages voter fraud in Michigan. That's what they'll say. 
But here's, here, here's how you get out there and vote legally ten times, is you take yourself to the polls and you get nine of your friends and family to go along with you. That's what I want every single person to do. Now, one, one thing, let me just give you a little bit of the nitty-gritty on politics, is when we think about how we're going to win this race, it really is simple. We just need to get our people who already plan to vote for us, we need to make sure they actually get out there and vote. But here's the thing. Things sometimes come up if you wait until Election Day. And look, I'm a firm believer that we ought to have Election Day instead of Election Season, but it is what it is, my friends. We've got election season, it is here, at least for now, and so we've got to play by the rules and we've got to play to win. So here, you, you talk to 100 Democrats, you talk to 100 Republicans, you, let's say, say you talk to, because we're getting a lot of Democrats too, say you talk to 100 people who plan to vote for Trump and 100 people who plan to vote for the other guy. 98 or 99 of the other guy's people will show up, whereas for us sometimes it'll be 95, 96. Now in a close election, that is the difference between Donald Trump being the president or Kamala Harris being the president. And so we got to figure out how to get every single person that plans to vote for our side to get out there and vote. Now, we, we all know what happens if you wait till Election Day. Some people, you know, I've heard stories of, well, I plan to vote on Election Day, but then the school nurse called, my kid threw up at school, and I had to go pick him up and take him to the doctor. Or something came up with my mom and I had to go help her. Or maybe I plan to go to the polls right around 6.30, but I had to stay to work until 8 o'clock and didn't get a chance to make it there before things closed. The way that we're going to win this election is to bank every single vote. So don't just get out there and vote. Get out there and vote as soon as you possibly can. And there's a website. I want to read off it just because I want to screw this website up. Swampthevote.com. You can check your registration.